All right, everyone. Welcome to another episode of O365A. In this episode, we have Emily Kirby from Microsoft, who is a program manager on the Microsoft Teams team uh, in the meeting space. And we're going to be talking about um, some of the private previews um, functionality that uh, Microsoft released, along with, I think, what's really important is, you know, how do we um, give feedback to Microsoft uh, with regards to meetings and, you know, how do they utilize a lot of that uh, metrics and stuff like that. So welcome, Emily. Thanks for uh, coming on the show with us here today. Uh, maybe just tell us a little bit about yourself and your history at Microsoft and sort of what you do, what you do now. Sure. Thanks, Habib. And thank you all for having me here. This is awesome um, to connect with you guys again. So um, as Habib said, my name is Emily Kirby. I'm a program manager in um, our quality and customer obsession team, which is a part of the Teams team at Microsoft. Um, and our charter is essentially looking at all of the signals and feedback um, and obsessing over the quality um, to make sure that our customers have the best product they can, um, especially nowadays when we are more dependent on it now, I think, in this remote space. But um, a little bit about me and my history at Microsoft. Um, this is actually today, February 3rd, is my one year anniversary on the Teams team. Um, so this is, I guess, a nice little cap off. <laughs> Uh, before that, I was a part of our internal IT organization called Core Services Engineering. I helped out with the rollout of Teams to Microsoft. And before that, I was supporting Microsoft Teams um, through Premier Support and Skype for Business. So it'll be five years this summer. Wow, that's awesome. Happy anniversary. Thanks. Thanks. I know I got so two weeks in the office and then we went remote, so. Yeah. Crazy, crazy times. Yeah. So, so I'll kick things off with our first question. So, Emily, I understand in the past six months, Microsoft has received two and a half million uh, bits of feedback come through just in the last six months for, for meetings alone. So maybe just talk about um, how that feedback comes in. Like, is this the rate my call? Is it report a problem? Is it like suggest a feature? Is it through the, you know, what channels are those coming in? And, and, and how are you dealing with all that feedback? Yeah, that's a good question. It's um definitely a lot, but it's awesome. Um, the feedback from when I started a year ago to now, the charts are just going up this way, but it's good. It's, it's um, correlating with the usage. And we have all of the different signals that come in um, through our team. User voice, um, which is suggest a feature, um, report a problem in our um, lower preview um, channels and our technical adoption program. Um, uh, give feedback, which is what everyone in the product will see, um, as well as anything on answers or tech community that all funnels into a tool we have called One Customer Voice. Um, and we have um, luckily a, a team who helps triage all of this feedback, but otherwise um, that is really the um, leading uh data that i have when i'm saying what are the issues people are facing i go and read that feedback what are the features people want i go and read that feedback and it funnels right to the product teams um and we actually have a prioritization meeting next week to go over hey what are customers saying um when looking into q2 for planning so it's um directly correlates into planning um and identifying issues that's great so um, you, you sort of answered my next question is, is what do you do with that feedback? But maybe you can give us a sense of, um, I mean, with that volume of feedback coming in, you alluded to there's a triage process. Um, mm -hmm. Can you just give us some insight into what exactly happens with that feedback? I mean, ultimately it makes it to the product group team, I assume, right? Yeah, yeah, it does. And um, we're, we pivot a lot because um, you know this isn't a, times change, things change. So right now a major focus for me um, and the team is on quality um, and reliability and performance, especially when it comes to meetings. Um, you know, you may have heard that's a pain point for some folks when we're working at home on different networks and may or may not be connected through a VPN or what, ha you know, every um, one at home in your house of family of five is on a call. Um, 
So for that type of feedback, I'll talk about specifically. Um, I go in daily and just start looking. It's kind of like we we call it like data wallows, and then we just wallow through the feedback. I categorize, um, retriage just with the volume, um, help out what our vendors um, didn't get to, or uh, make sure our signals are solid. And then at the end of the week, say, all right, what are the top issues? And we, if it's something internal, what do we have to fix before it goes out? Um, and the feature team, the um, engineering and PM side, they jump right on that feedback because it um, is a direct representation of what people are feeling. Um, that telemetry may or may not um, tell that story the same way. So. And, and then I guess you must have um, sort of a different bucket for bugs, issues versus um, feature requests that are a bit mm -hmm. more leading that require a bit more development, right? Right, definitely. There's, um, if I think about it, there's kind of the short term, what do we have to fix before it goes out to the pro, uh, you know, the, the general availability of the product. And also um, the whole other side is feature requests. What are people dying to have, you know, for a long time, it was multi-window meetings, which just bumped its way up to number one on user voice. Um, so all of those user voice items, we you know, I take the top 20 in meetings to the leadership on the meetings product um, development side, and we go through every single one and say, is this making it? What's the timeline? Um, so every time someone goes in and votes or adds a comment, you know, we're using that in actively in discussions and using it to prioritize our features. So I super encourage folks to use that. It's, um, we, we need it, we, we use it, so. Wow, that's that's really cool. Having spent decades developing software myself, I can't imagine with that volume of feedback how you guys manage all that. So kudos, however you're you're de dealing with it. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, um, put on my OCV hat and just dive in. You know. <laughs> so I just uh, just I guess keeping with that um, sort of topic a little bit, you know how. I know that you mentioned like user voice and then there's tech community and some of the other, like what would be sort of the main one we would, or you would point people to put um, their feedback in. And then secondly is after you gather that, like how do you filter as to like what you can reproduce and what you can't? Cause I mean, there's gotta be some things that are like, well, they're not really happening on our end, but they're happening at the end user end, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the first part, I'd say the top two places to go are right from within the team's client, give feedback and um, suggest a feature. Um, the give feedback is the top if anyone is in the public ring, um, not ring, the public, just uh, general availability of the product. That's where if you have a problem or feedback of any sort, put it there. If you have a feature request, put it in user voice using that suggestive feature. Those are the top two um, signals we track. And then um, the second part, I'm sorry, Habib, it was. Yeah, it was just more of like, after you get the feedback, you know, how do you triage of like, what do I need to go and reproduce? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, so, issues. yeah it is interesting and depending on where you are in the product i feel if it's like a teams and channels or chat there may be more of these repro steps but if there's repro steps like if someone takes the time to put that in there that's gold um because we don't get logs and it's just like if someone says my meeting crashed may or may not know why but if they say i went to share my screen i checked this box and it crashed like we're doing that all the time um with we call them our bug bashes um which you know folks do we we call ourselves um <laughs> b four b's the best bug bashers in the business it's kind of a <laughs> joke I've, <laughs> I made it up but um we have um usually we have a weekly standing bug bash and then um one offs mm -hmm. at least two or three others a week and we if someone you know we're trying to reproduce these issues um, but otherwise I think the team um, having that quality mindset a lot of the folks on my team came from a test background um, so 
you know, being pinged and say, hey, can I repro something real quick is not a uncommon occurrence either. So. Yeah, that, that's pretty awesome. And uh, we did a session on the preview program. So this is like the first time uh, customers without an NDA can start to test features before they're fully rolled out to kind of the public uh, version. Uh, and you had recently done the, uh, there was like a, a sync, uh, I think it was mm -hmm. the Teams Insider uh, preview feature sync. Uh, so we're seeing that program kind of going full, uh, full, or full force. How yeah. are you capturing the feedback of these? Because I know that if you're technically using the preview mm -hmm. features, you're not under the normal mainstream support. So how, how are you handling, you know, customers maybe running into some issues or trying to report that feedback? Yeah, um, that's a, a great segue. It's really exciting. We finally have the public preview program out. Um, yeah, the it's a different funnel for the feedback. We're able to um, slice and dice what ring, um, you know, where in the product um, you fall as far as the release. So um, being in the public preview, we're able to see the specific feedback from that ring. Um, or that that release, and um, it's a great way to get a, a signal from folks who uh, want to try these new features um, and say, hey, you know, just a sanity check, if you will, of how is this looking before we release it beyond. Um, so I, for, um, and at some point I'll talk about the features within the meeting space, but um, for my features um, that I've been tracking in the program, um, just today I was in uh, filtering on the public preview ring and reading each one of the pieces of feedback um, and bringing it to the, the feature program owner um, to say, hey, this is what people are saying. So um, it's a great way to get a, a sense of the feature that um, from a new audience, it's like the, a stepping stone, um, which we're so glad we were able to open up. Yeah, just just more analytics and data to, to parse through again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> does the, with the, the release of the preview program, does that slow down the release to uh, public now? Is it because now we have another gate to, to walk through and maybe there's some timelines that are adjusted around that? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question too. We actually, um, no, this is by no means a way to um, uh, slow it down. If if anything, um, it'll give us signals um, sooner that so we don't have to wait as long. Like if things look good in the preview program, we maybe will get it in sooner. Uh, not every time, um, but we're doing a concept of um, if we need more signal, go to preview. If not, we can. Um, release to both the preview and um, general availability together. But um, no, it, if the delays are happening, it's not because of the program, <laughs> if there are any. Yeah, just, but it's good if, you know, if there was an issue that we wouldn't have caught and would have gone out, it's good to catch those ahead of time, so. Can you give us some insight on what features are coming and uh, what is can maybe kind of ending out of the, the preview program? <laughs> yeah, well, first I'll do a, <laughs> a quick overview of what we do have in the program now. Um, and with Ignite coming, I have to keep my, my guardrails on here. But um, the features, I'm just going to read them off, are the meeting reactions, um, which is coming very, very soon uh, to public. Um, the together mode and large gallery for web meetings um, that is already in the preview program for Chrome and um, uh, Chromium Edge and soon also the two by two will be coming. Um, folks said, you know, there's one video stream, but then I can have large gallery and together mode. So we get that that's a little, um, you know, disjointed of an experience. So that is one that is coming. Um, the PowerPoint presenter view, um, ability to see the thumbnails and um, your meeting mm -hmm. notes that is out and there will be improvements. Um, that was the first run of the that feature, um, but that will be having some future iterations coming out. Um, and then the last one, which Mac users um, 
should be excited about is computer sound on Mac or share system audio. So that is now out. Um, and let me think off the top of my head what else will be coming soon. Um, reactions for web eventually. And the rest, I will point to the roadmap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't want to like take it night fire and thunder away. <laughs> Which is just one month away, right? I know, yeah. So, yeah, yeah that's coming pretty fast. I think registration fast. came out. Yeah. 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 So that's Ignite. Uh, I guess Ignite Spring, right? Is what they're calling it, or because something like that? Because I think they're going to have one in the fall as well, because they had one in the fall uh, last year. So, yeah. I guess a lot of new um, functionality come out. I, I well, I know a lot of us. Uh, we've been using some of the. Uh, the preview rings and some earlier ring stuff that we can't also discuss either, but it's great. Uh, so uh, I know that um, for my clients that have been using the preview program, um, you know, I've been really um, uh, hoping a lot of them would adopt it a little bit more, especially from like the IT and the adoption groups within the organization, just more in the sense of they'll know what to support when it finally comes out. And then also from the adoption perspective and communications mm -hmm. team, they can have that all that stuff ready to go when the functionality drops within the tenant, as opposed to being reactive when it comes out. So um, mm -hmm. a lot of them have been jumping on board and I've been uh, liking all the new experience functionality. And then everybody else in the organization are like, well, how come I don't have that, right? So it's like, well, you know, it's coming, but you know, we're, we're testing. And the nice thing about the preview program too is let's say you're supporting someone what i like is the ability to just flip back into ring four or the oh. normal production mode and then you can still see and, and do whatever everybody else as well so totally yeah so that being said i think that was really uh great emily thanks for coming on uh, i think it's really important that you know everybody share their feedback uh with regards to whether they're issues they're having or features and functionality that they're wanting, because um, what we've seen is that, you know, it's great that Microsoft is taking all this analytics and suggestion features, because now the end user has the ability to shape the product, right? The more of the people vote, the better the product will be with additional functionality. So again, uh, thanks for sharing that information. And uh, thank you everybody for listening in and hopefully we'll catch you on our next episode. Okay. See you. Thanks so much. It's great being here.